Plenty delving through what we know so far about the budget. One of those, the Australian Financial Review political editor, Philip Curry, who's seen a few of these come and go. Thanks for your time. No worries, Tom. What's your broad take on what we've been prepared for so far? I, I think well, the original sort of challenge, if you like, or the theme of the budget was how to help people with the cost of living without making it worse mm. by driving up inflation. And that still seems to be the... You know, the theme, but it just, it just feels like in the last few days the government's discovered it's got a lot more money than maybe it thought it had and this budget's going to be more on the generous side than I, th than I think we've been led to believe. And there's two aspects. There's the spending in the next financial year hmm. or, or even instant spending, yeah. which is sort of more about balancing that with inflation. Hmm. So, you know, one-off rebates for power bills. It doesn't really matter how big it is, it's yeah. not structural. Yeah. It just gets... You've got to make sure it's not inflationary. We'll get the government to explain yeah. that. And well, then there's the four years. So mm. looking at it now, it looks like at least $20 billion extra spending, and quite a bit of that is structural mm. when you look at aged care pay increases. I'm well, not saying yeah. it's not worthy, but... You know, oh, it's not cheap. It no, it's very, it's very expensive. I mean, yeah, the, uh, the, 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 the $14 billion pay... That, that aged care pay rise alone was $14.1 billion over four years. Uh, yeah, and we're going to see some big welfare increases tomorrow. We saw the Prime Minister announce this morning $1.9 to do the... Uh, to help the single parents, you know, to sort of make up for that thing that happened 10 years ago when Julie Gillard was Prime Minister. And so I assume the increases of the dole are going to be quite considerably larger than that. And that's all structural built in. Mm. Um, you know, the Treasurer has been dropping big fat hints that we're going to see a surplus or a balance tomorrow, but that will come under challenge from sort of years four onwards as these big spending pressures root like it's aged care. It's basically being that they're saying it's a one-off surplus that won't happen again, maybe. Yeah, I, I suspect it might years. be better than that. I suspect they may have surpluses for a bit longer than this year, but... Um, so what, two or three even? Yeah, but, but I think there's the old bait and switch, Tom. I think yeah. they're, they're getting us ready for the next phase. If you want to stay in surplus, we're going to have to, you know, cut this spending or increase these taxes. And you saw the down, down payment on that. Two Fridays ago at the National Cabinet, where finally, finally, you know, the Labor admitted the NDIS was a problem and mm. had to be reined in, and they, they agreed to try and reduce its growth rate. And that, that would save, just if they got it down to 8% in four years of the growth rate and beyond, lowered it beyond that, that would save more than $60 billion over 10 years. So these are the sorts of things, if you're going to, for the, for the mid-term structural integrity of the budget, are going to yeah. be absolutely critical, you know, absolutely critical, because, you know, you've got to have an NDIS, everyone wants one, but it's got to be affordable and it's got to be, you know, it's got to look after the people it's meant to look after and get rid of all the thieves and swindlers out of it. So um, these are very important measures if the budget's going to stay healthy over the medium term. And so... Revenue raising is the other side of mm. things. The PRRT mm. is the sort of signature effort, if you like. Yeah. I know they save a lot out of interest payments, but that's <laughs> not them. That's yeah. just happening yeah. anyway. Uh, were you surprised? Did you think they'd go a bit harder here? Because there's not much lower hanging fruit than the PRRT no. in terms of how much you could raise out of it and that as long as you do it without scaring off investment... Yeah, no, vo no individual voter is is going to you know be crying in this. No, no, I wasn't surprised, and you only got to look where, where Anthony Albanese, Al sorry, Anthony Albanese popped up this morning on his way back from the UK. It's his twelfth visit to Perth. Pe people tend to forget that Labor only fell across the line at the last election by a couple of seats, and the only reason they fell across the line was because they won all those seats in WA. Now, they announced a very modest increase to the PRRT this morning and have you seen the front page of the West Australian newspaper? Absolutely, absolutely gave them a bake. Even AP is <laughs> yeah. sort of like, well, oh, the, the great, gas industry, but, yeah, the, yeah. the industry's fine. Woodside's share price went up this morning, right? So and they're, they're, going to be, they're going to be the most affected by this. So APIA's message yesterday and they're the parent body for the industry said, look, OK, we can live with this, but now just leave us alone. Stop coming after us for money, right? They're so, saying that's fine as long as it's the last yeah, one. let's draw a line. They've had this... I mean, when you mentioned their price... Their but, but, sorry, going, my, yeah, my, so. my view is this is... I think they, they, they sort of went on this lower side because of the politics. And McGowan said this yesterday. He said, I warned them to be careful, and they have been. And, you know, and I now congratulate them all for, you know, getting together and coming up with something they can all live with. Now let's move on. So... And they still got smashed up in the WA media, you know, for, for, for a flesh wound on the gas industry. Yeah. Mm. Well, that's the initial reaction, I suppose. I mean, that's really interesting what you say. Woodside's mm. price still went up. Yeah. Even though there's <laughs> it's a... It's only you know, $600 great... million a year. It's probably... Yeah. They probably made that since we've been And talking. essentially, yeah. often with these things, the market's already mm. said there's going to be something new. On the PRRT, it comes out, they go, oh, that's it. Mm. It wasn't right, as bad as we thought. We've mm. already factored yeah, more than that in. exactly right. I guess what you're saying is we know the budget pressures are huge, mm. but 
Labor would be concerned about being able to form a majority. I mean, they've got pressure from green seats yep. on the East Coast and yep. so on. If they lose three or four seats in WA, as much as we're saying the coalition's in strife, hmm. the, the Labor majority is a long way from That's the right. shore. That's right. Tony, uh, sorry, Tony. Anthony Albanese has been there 12 times and he goes there a lot. Now, I, I would say if the election was held today, Labor would get a much higher primary vote than the 32.6 they got a year ago. Yeah. They'd probably have a four in front of it and so they would pick up seats in other parts of the country, um, but uh, but you don't take anything for granted, yeah. and, and and they are at a, above a high water mark in WA, and I don't think it, they, I think they know they won't be able to hold all those seats that they won because it was all about over there was about Clive Palmer and Scott Morrison and Christian Porter and Mark McGowan and those it's high court case yeah, yeah and so those there. those factors won't be there next time except for McGowan. The little kernel was around income tax cut stage mm. three, mm. Uh, and essentially you know not a conversation even for this budget, hmm. is the implication here there will be a genuine conversation and debate yes. before the next budget the, the, within Labor, even if you're just seeing how we'll adjust it and maybe re-spending some money and prioritising it, that is really going to happen? On, on a number of fronts, but I mean, not, it's not all going to be one way. I mean, one of the reasons the government's got money coming out of its ears, Tom, is because it's getting so much income tax again from a strong labour market, and that's you know, and, and they boast about their wage rises, and that may be so, but that's also pushing people into higher income tax brackets, and that's bracket creep. So yeah. you can argue stage three on the basis of bracket creep, but you can also argue that it... it it is also going to be inflationary. If the inflation is still a problem this time next year, if the RBA hasn't pushed us into recession, you know, one thing that the sort of progressive groups don't like to admit about Stage 3 is that most of that money goes to low- and middle-income earners, not to high-income earners, and they will be more likely to spend it, the low- and middle, and that, that makes them potentially inflationary. So there's, there's, there's a many permutations around Stage 3, and I think yeah. it's judicious of the Treasurer just not to not to go down that path yet until you see what the economic could and political... Could be an alter, a delay, all sorts of things. It could be anything. We might need them, we might not need them. All right. Yeah. Well, Curry, thank you.